painting pictures which make me die for joy. I am creating with an absolute naturalness, without the slightest aesthetic concern. I am making things that inspire me with a profound emotion, and I'm trying to paint them honestly. That was how Salvador Dali described his work. His most famous painting, of course, is The Persistence of Memory, which suggests Einstein's theory that time is relative and not fixed. The idea for Salvador Dali's hallmark soft watches that first appear in The Persistence of Memory came to Dali when he was staring at a runny piece of camembert cheese on a hot August day. In 1940, as World War II tore through Europe, Salvador Dali, who was Spanish, retreated to the United States with his wife Gala, where they lived for eight years. They were able to escape Spain because they were issued visas by Aristides de Souza Mendes, the Portuguese consul in Bordeaux. Salvador and Gala Dali crossed into Portugal and subsequently sailed from Lisbon to New York. Dali's arrival in New York was one of the catalysts in the development of that city as a world art center in the post-war years. It was also a catalyst in the early life of Francisco Poble. Francisco Poble was born in New York City in 1932 of a Sicilian mother and a Spanish father. His father had been friends with Salvador Dali and when Francisco was 13 years old, his father introduced him to his old friend Salvador. Dali was to become Francisco Poblet's teacher and lifelong mentor. Francisco Poblet will be coming to Williamsport this evening at the Ankle Root Art Gallery on 38 West 4th Street, where there will be an exhibit of his work and he will be available to speak about his fascinating experiences. I had the opportunity to speak with Francisco Poblet by phone recently. Here is Francisco Poblet. My mother was from Sicily and my father was from Barcelona, Spain. Why did your parents emigrate to the United States? Oh, well, because of Franco. Franco wasn't very happy with them. I guess they were a little bit uh, leaning toward, uh, particularly toward socialists. <laughs> My father met my mother over here in this country. Originally, he came over here on a, on a schooner, on a fishing schooner, tuna, to, to be exact. Uh, he jumped ship, actually. <laughs> he, his brother, and uh, several other sailors. And they made their way up from Maine all the way up to New York and wound up on Wall Street. Now, your father had a very interesting friend who he introduced you to when you were a young lad. Who was that? Oh, Salvador Totali, yes. Uh, he introduced me at the Conferencia Española. It was a Spanish conference that was taking place over here in New York at the time. And how old and, were you then, Francisco? Oh, I was probably 13 years old. At the time, did you want to be a painter? Were you already a painter? Oh, yes. By the time I met him, I, had, I saw my very first one when I was 11 years old in competition against individuals that were 18 and 21. First, one first prize and sold it. Was this something that was in the family? Was your father an artist? Was your mother an artist? My mother loved to dance and my father loved to build ships. He used to build these very ornate sail ships. And can you remember how young you were when you realized that you loved to paint? When I was very, extremely young, as a matter of fact, I used to draw on all my books my, for homework, and I got a lot of bangs on the top of the head because of it. But I guess I must have been very, very, very young, five or six years old, and I was, a teacher saw uh, the first painting that I did in watercolor, and she called the other uh, instructors in. They liked it, and they got in touch with my parents, and they said that I should follow you know, that, that particular field, that I enjoyed it and that I was good. That was my first stint with anything to do with the professional world. I just painted anything that I liked, the watercolors, and that's all I knew. When you met Dali, what was that first meeting like? Frightening. <laughs> Frightening. <laughs> he was a very big man in comparison to me, and I saw that big mustache and those dark eyes. They were rather scary, to tell you the truth. 
And I really didn't know who he was, except that he was an artist, according to what my father told me. Well, my father mentioned that I enjoy painting, so I had some of my drawings, you know, and he, he looked at them, and he saw the drawings, and he said, Banana. And that's how it began. <laughs> I went to the hotel. I met his, uh, his wife, Gala. She was beautiful and wonderful woman. Gave us milk and tidbits and coffee. And he looked at me and he said, okay, I'm going to start you off. He said, he just put a, a piece of paper in front of me. He says, now draw. I said, what should I draw? Look into it and find it. He says, I'll be back. And he left the room. <laughs> when he came back, he just looked at it for a while. And he said, okay, now I'll teach you. And that's when he took me under his wing. How long were you with Salvador Dali learning? This was approximately 46 or 47. I was with him until 48. When he, he left the country and he returned to Spain, I was with him a, few, a couple of years. But we kept in touch. And I kept, you know, under his tutorship, actually, because he would give me lessons and tell me, look at the canvas. It's there. It's there. I said, what's there? He says, the painting is there. <laughs> He says, every canvas has a painting within it. He says, all you have to do is bring it out. As a matter of fact, one time he gave me a painting that he had me start. And he looked at it. And he says, oh, I made a mistake. I, I started to correct it. He says, no correcting. He wiped the whole thing off. He says, now turn it upside down. And let's see what you see. And I looked, I looked, and I just followed with my brush. And when he came back, he said, that's the painting I saw in the beginning. <laughs> he actually taught me. The philosophy of surrealism, I, mean, I had no idea what it was. That's how we actually got started. Can you tell us a little bit about the philosophy of surrealism? Well, the philosophy of surrealism is to catch an instant of time, freeze time, freeze time, whether it be physical or psychological. Actually, what it is, it's trying to express yourself by capturing images or ideals that come to the mind. You know, from the subconscious to the conscious mind, which analyzed and then transformed onto your, or transmitted onto your canvas. So you were with <laughs> Salvador Dali while he was living in the United States and kept in touch with him when he went back to Spain. How did you then go on to become a professional artist and to sell your work? I used to copy everything he did. I loved his work. I didn't know what surrealism was, but I know that I enjoyed the, the ways I could express myself using his technique. That's exactly what I did. I continued doing that, and then I went to the masters. I studied the masters, and I started copying the masters just to learn their techniques, which actually he taught me, painting in the old, in the old fashion, you know, the glazes, and building the painting up slowly. We don't put a color. We put an impression of a color or the image of a color, so that when you see it, the, color, the light hits it and it vibrates the color that you want. In other words, if you want a purple, you will paint red and then glaze it over with a blue. When the light would hit it, it will reflect purple, but you don't paint purple. And I see that you did comic book covers. And Yes, yeah, yes, I worked for Walt Disney, Hanna-Barbera, Warner Brothers, Paramount, all, all of them. Yes, I was working for Western Publishing at the time, and I was doing all these characters. I, I did about 280 t different titles per year, just the covers, that's all. I did the first Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? The first uh, Pink Panther, and all these uh, different characters were uh, gave it to me from Virginia, Wisconsin, and I had to develop them. The Deep Eat the Roadrunner, all those characters. Are you still a surrealist? Yes, I do surrealism and realism. I'll do a portrait by the same token if you want one, very realistically. But uh, my preference is surrealism because I, I could express myself in a direct manner of how I see it and how I feel it. Like I see visions occasionally in my dreams and I could transmit them onto a canvas with ease because I, I could express it, they create themselves. They, they ask to be materialized. They want a physical being for the viewer. That is easy, and that's why I, I stick to surrealism. I love to do landscapes, and I love to do water, and I love to do waterfalls. Yes, those I do just to relax.
relax. But not when I'm painting seriously. When I'm painting seriously, I delve deep inside of me into that little well in the subconscious, and I draw it up, or I look at the canvas, and as Dali taught me, look for the painting that's there, and it will develop itself. And that's what would happen. And that's the way I approach my art. Francisco Poble speaking about surrealism, his work, and the mentorship of Salvador Dali. You will have the opportunity to meet Francisco Poble this evening at the Ankle Root Art Gallery, which is on 38 West 4th Street in Williamsport. Francisco Poble will be at the Art Gallery tonight and tomorrow from 5 to 9 p.m. That's Friday, August the 24th, Saturday, August the 25th. Thank you very much to Francisco Poblet.